Well then, it seems just about everybody has lost. Yeah, that pretty much appears to be the outcome, seemingly, of the big Epic versus Apple free Fortnite case. It's genuinely fascinating and I think could have implications for the game's industry as a whole. So let's dive in. Nobody wins in the official ruling on Epic Games versus Apple. So the verdict. Last week, Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers concluded that Apple are not unfairly monopolizing the mobile app space with iOS or its controversial in-app payment system. Epic brought 10 charges against Apple. Epic lost nine of those charges. So that is obviously not great for Epic. However, Apple was found to engage in anti-competitive conduct regarding in-app purchases. And that is a pretty big loss for Apple, actually. Now, from the official um, verdict here, Epic Games shall pay damages in an amount equal to 30% of the, well, 12 mil-ish in revenue Epic Games collected from users in the Fortnite app on iOS through Epic Direct payments between August and uh, October 2020. So the whole point, right, of Epic, you know, doing the Epic Direct payment was to circumvent Apple's 30%. So Judge Gonzalez um, has said, no, you circumvented the rules. Apple should have 30% of that revenue. Cough it up. Plus, 30% of any such revenue Epic Games collected from November 1st, 2020 through the date of judgment and interest according to law. Now, these appear to be largely non-punitive damages rather than actual punishment, because obviously that's a total pittance to a company like Epic. Uh, the court are trying to restore Apple to the point they basically would have been if Epic didn't introduce the direct payment scheme. So it's basically trying to quash that beef. So that is good for Apple and uh, doesn't really matter to Epic. However, Judge Gonzalez Rogers also ordered Apple to remove their anti-steering rules. Now, this is certainly something. These are policies that prohibit developers from informing users about alternatives to Apple's own in-app purchasing system. So that was basically it. It's like if you open the Amazon Kindle app, you know, there's no there's no way to buy a, a book because it's just it's just a reader for something on your Amazon account. And Amazon would have had to have been fairly careful in how they do their messaging there so that people are aware of how that works. But even at that, there was a decent bit of thought of like, well, are Amazon actually getting some special treatment on how the Kindle app uh, is, is allowed to even have the verbs that it does? Um, so it's just that sort of thing, you know, the haves and have nots and a lot of developers just feeling that Apple were being really heavy handed over it. So here's from the official verdict. Apple Incorporated and uh, its officers, agents, servants, <laughs> employees or any other, uh, you know, basically Apple person are hereby permanently restrained and enjoined from prohibiting developers from including their apps and their metadata buttons, external links, or other calls to action that direct customers to purchasing mechanisms, in addition to in-app purchasing, and two, communicating with customers through points of contact obtained voluntarily from customers through account registration within the app, and this must take place within 90 days. So this basically just means a developer will be allowed to say, hey, yeah, you could buy this in-app purchase here, or, you can get the same thing 20% cheaper using, or, you know, our direct payments. Or, hey, if you use the direct payment, we'll actually get more of the money and you'll support us and it won't cost you anything extra. And certainly, I mean, we don't have any mobile launch plans, uh, you know, for, for our game right now. But let's just say, you know, we did do something like that and, uh, you know, maybe... See, I, I can't really see us having a mass amount of in-app purchases uh, unless, you know, that was like a way to unlock the game. But I'd at least say, you know, unlock the game uh, on iOS if that's really convenient for you. Or if you fall through to this link, well, it'll cost you the same amount of money. We'll get a little bit extra of a cut. And I think a lot of users would be more than happy to support developers rather than, you know, give the middleman a cut. So that is all um, fairly interesting, really. 
And I imagine a lot of developers will try to do that. And that said, that's anti-steering. And it's the sort of thing, you know, people say that piracy is a service problem. So, look, if you're buying an in-app purchase and it is as simple as double-click the power button, look at your phone, Face ID authenticates you, you get a happy Apple beep, psh, it's done. Well, I mean, I think a lot of people are just going to go with what is convenient unless developers offer a discount that is a part of their steering strategy. Because if a developer offers a user, you know, maybe a 5 or 10% discount, but then they're maybe dealing with a 15% cut or a 10% cut, well, then they'll obviously be coming out ahead. So yeah, there's that. I mean, certainly if you're dealing with, you know, like Stripe or PayPal, you know, your, your payment processing fee is going to be less than 10% by a decent bit. So it could be really good for developers. Appeals, though. What about appeals? Because could this be appealed? Well, Apple are reportedly still deciding on whether or not to mount an appeal to this ruling. In an investor call, an Apple rep said they're basically evaluating their legal options. Now, they did reiterate that from their perspective, this ruling was an almost total victory. Because, yeah, of the 10 things, like, Epic had nine of theirs be dismissed. Right? That's a clear friggin' loss for Epic. They did not get the vast majority of uh, of what they wanted. And uh, like I'm fairly sure it like if Apple wanted to just terminate the Unreal Engine account, they're totally within their rights to do so. Yep. Which is another side of this. Um so yeah, Epic were ordered to pay restorative damages. Apple did not have to return Fortnite to the iOS App Store, and Apple can choose to terminate other developer accounts that are affiliated with Epic Games. And let's be real. Apple would be well within their rights to do that. And frankly, I would not be pissed off at Apple if they did. I mean, there's a bit of me that would be because of the knock-on effect, because it's Unreal Engine for you know, well, Unreal Engine, that would suck for developers. But the thing here is Epic flagrantly knowingly and publicly broke the rules, right? Like they, they had the rules that they agreed to and they broke those rules on purpose. So because they did that and because they went so aggressive, I mean, I have sympathy for anyone and everyone who is negatively impacted by this other than Epic, purely because of the way that they went about doing it. And that is insane because it's friggin' Apple. How do you manage to, you know, to, to break the terms of use and all of that in such an aggro way that you almost have people having a bit of, you know, more sympathy for Apple than you? And also in a way that, of course, was pretty shitty for all of their Fortnite players. Especially if you're a Fortnite player, you're primarily playing on iOS. You know, all those in-app purchases you got for those skins and stuff. Well, it's like, sure, you can play it in console or PC, but what if mobile was the primary way you played it? Well, you're not going to feel great about the investment you made in that game. So yeah, Apple, by the way, have also not decided whether they will ban any Epic products beyond Fortnite, and they are still considering Epic's general future in iOS. What I would say there is that I, I think Apple... <sighs> because it was so specifically in and around Fortnite... If Apple decided Fortnite's never going back, sorry, you shouldn't have broken the rules, I'd be fine with that. I would hope that Apple would see the bigger picture and understand the knock-on effects on groups other than Epic Games, uh, that they would show some clemency when it comes to Unreal and stuff that would impact other devs, because I think it would be really shitty if Epic's bad, bad, bad behavior then, you know, cause big headaches and problems for developers who absolutely do not deserve to have those issues. Now, uh, meanwhile, Epic announced their intent to appeal almost immediately after the verdict was given. They want a higher court to re-examine the initial ruling, though they did not give uh, a bunch of details on the legal basis for, uh, you know, for their, um, for their appeal. Now then, bias reporting. Looking at things here, we think that... Nobody can call this an absolute victory because Apple have lost on steering and the stronger the moat is around payments in iOS, the more that they are getting their 30% and the happier they are for their bottom line. And Epic lost 9 out of 10. That's a loss, right? I mean, if it's a best of 10, 
it's called <laughs> way sooner than by the time you've racked up nine losses. Epic were unsuccessful in the vast majority of their challenges. They at least, you know, the one thing that they did win on is one that actually will be, you know, bad for Apple, but also just good for developers. So in a way, there is a victory there for just about anybody who is a developer. So that is a good thing. Um, but yeah, Apple succeeded in, on pretty much everything else. Many outlets did seem desperate to declare a winner here. And we just thought that there was a lot of drama there. I mean, so some of the headlines, you know, major win for Epic Games, uh, you know, and then for, for you know, this outlet, iPhone maker wins antitrust lawsuit, uh, you know, Epic Games wins injunction. It's like, these are all very much targeting on the specific thing that Epic won, even though you know, Epic wins big in Apple trial verdict from PC gamer, uh, and it's like, is that really true? Because do you know what the URL for this is? You can actually see it in our um, on our uh, research doc here. <laughs> Fortnite to return to iOS after Epic wins big. That URL ain't true. It is Apple are within their rights to say no more Fortnite. Uh, so it's it's interesting uh, for the people who really want a deep dive into this again from a legal perspective. Uh, you know, we are not lawmen. Richard Hogue is a lawman. Therefore, you can check out uh, you can check out his episode on that. So there's that from the press. Really, I think uh, all the big companies in a way lost, but it's generally good for other developers because of the change to the steering policy. Never forget the real story, because in all this doom and gloom, uh, let's not forget the real highlight of this case that happened six days in and was brought up again in Judge uh, Gonzalez Rogers' verdict. Peely can be naked in court because he's just a banana man. Cool. Yeah. Hey, Apple just, methods are unfair yeah. to the consumer. Isn't the banana in your game naked? No, that's that's exactly how to that's how to defeat your opponent in court. You go butt naked banana man. So it's interesting. I was I actually went through to Yeah. 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 So to to follow up a little bit on um how they uh how places reported just because I, I went through and looked at some of the links uh it's definitely you could definitely see a lack of nuance because in pc pc gamers opens by saying uh judge yvonne gonzalez rogers has issued her ruling in the epic v apple case and they'll be crying into their cappuccinos and cupertino which you know is funny enough as a as a play on words i do like the play, or play yeah but it's also like very much um very much one-sided in a way that's kind of i don't know if it's like irresponsible but it kind of feels that way it's like the same with um you'll have the wrong impression from some of those headlines. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not even just headlines, it's like the opening as well, because Kotaku say today a US district court judge ruled in Epic Games' favor in its lawsuit against Apple. Full stop. Like I I understand, like, here's the thing. Even if this article does go on to explain that, yeah. that's yeah. not reflective. Yeah. Epic lost nine out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that the uh the Kotaku one doesn't go into it. Significant more detail. Just kind of the point of you know you pick the you pick the the bit off the top that's important to that's what like, you think the viewer base. But even, kind of, even this winner winner chicken dinner dinner for Epic Games. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't get Fortnite back on iOS unless Apple decide to be nice to them. By the way, Apple can also terminate the Unreal account. That is not winner winner chicken dinner. Nope. Like I get it. If this was about Royale, you know. It's not a winner winner chicken dinner. It's, you know, maybe you came 60th and, uh, you know, you got one or two kills. You're not completely embarrassed, but it certainly wasn't a win. It wasn't an absolute victory. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting looking at, like, because, I mean, you look at Tim Sweeney, his Twitter account, because he's obviously very vocal all the time. And he responds to uh, Today's ruling isn't a win for developers or for consumers. Epic's fighting for fair competition among in app payment methods and app stores for a billion consumers, which, you know, at Grand AOS, he, he certainly believes it. And there's an element of truth to it, but it's like it's not a win. They they don't consider it a win whatsoever. And obviously they're appealing it. You don't appeal when you win. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's obviously nuance in, you know, appealing nine of the rulings as opposed to the one you did get a vaguely favorable one in. But it's certainly it's certainly a, a very nuanced one. It's funny because Epic actually asked Apple to put Fortnite back in South Korea. Mm. Because according to uh, a bill passed in South Korea, the platform owners google and apple are no longer restrict are no longer allowed to restrict app developers to build in payment systems so in south korea specifically 
like completely devoid of anything that Apple and Epic have been doing in court. This law has been passed and now Google and Apple have to allow alternate ones. So it's interesting that this actually is going through in some capacity versus Apple. Mm. So it may not be happening in the US, but it's happening in South Korea. And now, now this is this is the fun thing, where if this is an Apple, if this is an Epic victory, sorry, then why do they have to ultimately grovel to Apple to be allowed back in South Korea? Because they're kind of saying, no, well, everything's fine now in South Korea, so we'll go there. Kind of as, as if they're trying to throw the weight around going, we'll let you have Fortnite back where we, you know, where it suits us. So it, it's interesting how this thing is adapting over time. The whole story where it's funny that it's lost in America, but one in South Korea. Yeah, but I, I think, I mean, the, it's like the South Korean one is kind of yeah. like, it's a thing going on beside yeah. this that's not really relevant to this case. Yeah. It's like a more of a, from my understanding, it's like a regional yes. legislation based thing. Therefore, it doesn't really have a bearing on, yeah. you know, Apple's worldwide policy yeah. in the same way that you have know, sometimes, yeah, a company just has to conform to the laws of the land whenever it's, you know, wherever it's doing business. So that's just a South Korea thing. Yeah. That's why I think, that's yeah. actually one thing I find funny where South Korea, this ruling happens. And everyone goes, oh yeah, it's South Korea. But, you know, it's it, it's almost like the precedent set in U.S. court is kind of closer to worldwide. Obviously, the U.S. is so much bigger. Mm. But I think I think that's interesting where this kind of goes quietly without anyone having to put a big thing because the government's kind of paying attention. Whereas it's not happening in Europe or in uh, the U.S. Yeah, so that's basically it. <laughs> um, Apple did lose something. Epic lost more than Apple. And that's yeah. where the story... Where the story really ends with, I think, the one good thing being for, uh, basically for all of us, is that there are those changes to Apple's uh, steering policy. So that certainly is good. That's basically it for uh, for today's story. There's not a massive amount else to get into. We need to see what the appeals are and basically what Apple chooses to do. Because ultimately it seems that the reading of this is that Epic broke the rules. They knowingly broke the rules. And it is now, you know, the ball's in Apple's court. Are they going to be nice to Epic? Are they not? kind of well within their rights to do either and certainly perhaps if epic did not essentially launch a surprise attack apple would have had you know would have more of a reason to be nice to them so there you go that's it for uh, today's video we'll see what happens as the story develops thanks for watching have a great day see you next time